Hi, I'm Sean Gannon, and this is Minute Math, and today we're learning about how to solve a compound inequality with and. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help to use Minute Math. We're given this problem here, solve one-third x minus four is greater than or equal to negative two, and negative two is times, <laughs> multiply by in parentheses, x minus three, which is greater than or equal to four. We wanna graph the solution and write the solution in interval notation. One tip I'm gonna say from the beginning is that this is a unique case, and we'll talk about it at the end, so stay tuned. Our first step here is we want to, well, solve each one of these inequalities individually. So we'll start with the first one. One third x minus four is greater than or equal to negative two. I'm going to add a 4 to both sides here. Getting 1 third x by itself, these 4's cancel, greater than or equal to, and negative 2 plus 4 is a positive 2. Then from there, I want to get rid of this 1 third. So I get rid of that and multiply both sides by 3. 1 third and 3 cancel on the left, giving me x by itself is greater than or equal to, 2 times 3 is good old 6. Now the next one here, we have negative two times that x minus three is greater than or equal to four. From there, we want to, well, get x by itself again. So I'm gonna divide both sides by a negative two. We have an x minus three left on the left because the negative twos cancel. On the right, we have, well, four divided by negative two is a negative two. But remember, we divided by a negative side sign over an inequality, inequality flips. Greater than or equal to becomes less than or equal to. I add a three to both sides here, and we have x is less than or equal to. Negative two plus three is a positive one. So now let's go graph each one of these individually. Let's make our number line right here, and let's see. Oh, I have one and a six. We'll start at zero right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and let's put negative one. Why not here? Let's graph our first inequality. X is greater than or equal to six. Well, it's equal to a positive six, so we have a closed circle. I'll do it on the top of the number line here. And since it's also greater than six, our arrow goes to the right. Now I'll go in the denominator, or <laughs> denominator, underneath the number line here. Woof, not denominator, that's a fraction. We have X is less than or equal to one. So we look at 1 here, and since it could equal 1, we have a closed circle. From there, we are le less than uh, 1, so our arrow goes to the left. Now this is going to be where this becomes interesting. Normally we want to graph each one individually, and we combine it together to be one graph where they are the same, where they overlap, hence the and. But notice here, there is no section on the first inequality and second inequality that overlap, that are the same. So that means there is no number where they both work, they both are true. So our first definition here, first set says x has to be, which makes sense, right? x has to be greater than or equal to six, and x has to be less than or equal to one. If that was a puzzle given to you, you would say, well, what number is that? What number is any number, we can't find any numbers, that where x is greater than or equal to six, but also less than or equal to one. And so this is where the tricky situation comes in. Sometimes you wanna double check your work to make sure you did it right, but in this case, there is no solution. There is no value, no solution, no sets of values that make both of these statements true. And so for this problem here, the answer is no solution, and our graph is just a blank graph. We can't graph it. I hope you learned something here on how to solve a compound inequality with and. If you did, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. This helps us make more free math lessons for you and for everyone else. So as always, thanks for watching.